That's my hot exhaust mod right there. Look at that shiznats. Boom! Power. See, the exhaust has to go around that loop de loop, and that's how it gets all the power. This V6 Mustang project I've been working on, and I've got it running really, really well. Uh, all of the the concerns it had um, in terms of reliability and simply operating are, are taken care of. And so the next step is we've got a little bit more cosmetic work to do, a little bit more cleaning and stuff like that to do. Uh, but I really want to work on performance next. The thing I want to work on is we've got it to a baseline. It's running as well as it ever did, brand new. And now I want to see. What can we do with this platform to make this platform as fun as it can be without fundamentally changing what it is? Uh, now, I don't necessarily want to make it louder. It is going to inherently probably get a little bit louder, but I'm not trying to make it louder because 90 degree V6s don't sound good. And so if you're listening to a song you don't like, you don't turn it up louder to hear a song you don't like even louder. We're not trying to make a bad sounding motor louder. So to that end, I got these Flowmaster 50s. I got a pair of these guys here. Uh, this is actually part of a kit that sold for 94 through 97 GT Mustangs, it's the V8 ones. Uh, and so it's got a heat shield that is specific to the Mustang uh, you know, application. It's got the hangers on it specific to the Mustang application. And so since this is a V6 and it's got that Y pipe that necks it down to 2 inches, how many times are you going to drive by, man? But since I'm going to the trouble of doing all this stuff, I of course would like to quantify it as well, right? This is a manual transmission car, which means that the consistency is going to come down to my ability to be consistent. And, and I'll be honest, I'm not the greatest driver in the world. So I'm going to have to just try and do my best of being consistent and get an average of several different runs. And then after I've done that with the car as it is stock, we'll install this good stuff and then we'll do the same work over again and see if I've picked up any performance. So we're seeing here that it says uh, the most recent one is 10.25 and the fastest one is 10.25 seconds. Uh, then I've got this little guy here and uh, we've got three runs in there. Uh, 0 to 60 is 10.10 10 seconds. Run 6, 9.77 seconds. Uh, 9.77 seconds there on that one, 0 to 60. So um, that sounds pretty good. I, I mean, I got two precisely the same. That's kind of not bad. And those were going in opposite directions even. Uh, by default, stock uh, magazine articles had this at 9.9 .9 seconds, 0 to 60 for the manual transmission V6 1996 Mustang. And so I was able to get pretty consistently on several back and forth runs, 9.7 to 10.1 seconds, uh, any time that I felt like I did a good job on it. I did a couple of not so good jobs on it. I got it actually a 9.3 on one of them, but I kind of roasted the clutch a little bit there and I don't think that really counts. So uh, 9.7 is the time to beat. I'm gonna call 9.7 to 10.1 kind of my, my range, my window in there. And that means that if I consistently can get better than that, that means I improved the car, at least in terms of acceleration. So what am I doing underneath the car right now? Well, the next thing that has to happen is that this exhaust system has to get out of here. 
So by default, you've got the two cylinder banks that come back to a Y right here, and then they come down in a single pipe to a two inch exhaust pipe to a single exhaust muffler that goes out the back of the car. And I think there's kind of three different things maybe that we could be looking at here for what we expect from the exhaust. The first one I think is most important to me anyways is just performance. And measuring from the outside of the pipe, that is two inches. So that's a two inch pipe. And if you do like any exhaust calculator in the world, you'll see that a two inch pipe flows about enough air, about enough exhaust for about 140 horsepower. And that means that at the peak horsepower of this engine, supposedly 145 horsepower, we're already running into the most that that really wants to flow before it starts committing some pretty serious you know, power compression. Now, since any complex machine is just a bunch of simple machines that interact with each other, uh, that's also true of this, this whole relationship between the engine, the exhaust, and the rest of the car. And the thing that I expect to happen when I open up this exhaust system and put a more free-flowing exhaust in here is that my power band will be extended upward a little bit in the RPM range. So right now this thing goes bedtime at like 3,000 RPM and, and just doesn't really produce a lot more power above that. Uh, that's a factor that's affected by the exhaust system, by the intake manifold, by the cam, by the heads. This car was just tuned to go okay in traffic, but not really, you know, not really rip around the track very well. And they also chose an extra low gear ratio there, or extra numerically low gear ratio, a very shallow gear set, I believe in order to keep engine RPM very low because this is an externally balanced 90 degree V6. So uh, higher RPMs make it kind of jittery. Just that's the nature of the geometry of the engine that really can never be changed. Now on the newer Mustangs that use this same engine, the uh, 99 through 2004, those are internally balanced engines and they have a little bit higher gear ratio in the axle so you get a little bit more torque to the wheels. Cool. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trade a little bit of that jiggle. I'm just going to put up with a little bit of that jiggle and I'm going to put 3.45 to 1 axle gears back there. That's going to move my cruise RPM up about 25% and it's also going to increase the torque to the wheels at any given gear by about 25%. So that's going to mean I'm going to spend more time at higher RPMs and in order to make use of spending more time at higher RPMs, opening up the exhaust so that it flows better at higher RPMs. And I'm also going to be doing some intake work, which uh, we'll see that later on. So this is called an H pipe. And I think you can probably figure out why it's called that. And the job of that is to replace this Y. So what's going to happen is we're going to make a cut somewhere around here. I don't know exactly where. And we're going to make a cut somewhere around here. And then this is going to go ahead and just live in that approximate area. And it's going to give me two outlets here. To okay, with the help of this orange hammer that everybody has, uh, this one here is made by Tekton, so it's a super nice one. I, I go with luxury orange hammers. With the help of an orange hammer, I've got the dual pipe adapter on there. As a YouTuber, my next obligation here is I have to start the car with the headers open or with the, the pipes open. That's just the way the law works on YouTube. Um, but I'm an outlaw, not gonna do it. Uh, it would serve no purpose really. So what the next thing I'm gonna do is get the hangers installed. Uh, the, the kit that I bought, that's this pace setter uh, dual exhaust adapter here. This kit came with the additional hangers to hang the second exhaust muffler on here because, of course, the car originally just had a single muffler. And so I'm going to get that stuff installed and then get the tailpipes on and uh, maybe, if I'm lucky, have this thing run tonight. Cool. We got dual exhausts. They are a little bit less obtrusive than the big old chrome pipes hanging out the back of that car. And those sometimes I get clowned about because of how far they stick out. And that's just the way it arrived in my life. I've kind of taken to a liking to them. It's sort of like emphatic, <laughs> you know, like, fuck you, I got big old exhausts. And so these guys here are a lot more sedate, but I think it still looks cooler visually than just the one little, little rinky dink guy hanging out that, uh, that is now sitting sadly off to the side there. I didn't show you a lot of the installation process. Uh, really, the installation process is, it's simple but hard, you know, the. The job is relatively simple to do, but there were a few undignified statements uttered by me during the installation because there's a lot of 
parts that all have to kind of line up together at the same time. Uh, but I think it's it's together fairly well. This looks like it's going to be a clearance issue here, but I don't think it actually is. That's that's just about in the right spot because as these control arms hinge upward, the axle will come back just a tiny little bit, and I think it'll clear it. But we'll find that out uh, when I put it back down on the ground. Right now, the axle is at full droop. And similarly, the same, uh, the same sort of clearance issue exists over here, but I don't think it's going to quite be a problem. I think it's, they elegantly got it exactly right. So as you can see, the four catalytic converters are still in place. This is two and a quarter inch tubing, two and a quarter inch tubing. This is two and a half inch tubing that was compressed down at the ends to form right around the two and a quarter inch tubing, nice and tight. And then that comes back here and goes to the two and a half inch pipes on the way out to the, the back of the vehicle. But while it's up here, I'm going to show you how to check for exhaust leaks without running the engine. And you can do that anywhere, so you can do it with the engine cold and not burn yourself. Uh, so even if you have to get your hands up in tight areas and feel for exhaust leaks, you can feel for them with a cold exhaust system. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So, pretty simple. You take a shop vac or anything that's capable of blowing a, a lot of air. Uh, you could use a leaf blower if it's electric or anything else that uh, that has, you know, even a, I guess, a hair dryer, as long as it has a, a, you know, cold setting, and tie that in using some tape, just tape it inside of the muffler, and it doesn't have to be tight, it's okay if air leaks out here, because we're not really expecting a super tight seal, and since this is a dual exhaust, I also put a little piece of tape partially over the other pipe. Now, air is going to leak out of here, that's fine, I didn't actually want to fully seal it off, we'll still be able to feel for leaks underneath the vehicle. Now this next part, I'm not going to be able to chat with you because it's going to be making a lot of noise, but I'm going to go under there and see if I can feel any leaks around any of the joints. Well, poop. I had not intended for this to be a two-part episode. This was supposed to be a one-part episode, but that was all recorded in summer of 2022, and it is now January 2023 as I record this little section right here. And I realized as I was editing the video last month that the, the footage was just not usable from the after. So I did record 0-60 to 60 after doing the exhaust, and it was a significant improvement, um, like a whole second off my 0-60 to 60 time. Now, before you get freaked out a whole second off like 10 is still nine that's still not fast but still knocking a whole second off to 0 to 60 is unmistakable like it made a difference especially from 3000 to 5000 rpm it's a whole different car in there so i'm super happy with that um, i think it sounds better to my ear as so much as that matters uh, i think it looks cooler because it has you know, the two exhaust outlets which just fits the combustion car aesthetic i think better in earlier parts of this footage, you may have seen that the one on the right-hand side of the car was kind of hanging down a little bit lower than the left-hand side. That's because I had to reuse the hanger donut things I had at first. Those have all been replaced and kind of straightened. I've been under there since then and, and kind of fine-tuned the fit. And so the fit's really awesome, and I'm thoroughly happy with this. Now, the bad thing is, of course, that this car is in pieces. As you can see, there is no steering wheel there, and the hood is up. Uh, there's a few things going on that I've recorded since then, and those are probably going to get published as videos before I publish part two of this series, or this, you know, zero to 60, what the muffler did, all that stuff. Uh, so I guess that's a good excuse to subscribe. I didn't plan it that way, but, you know, I could always use more subscribers. So I'm going to leave you with a little bit of footage of post-exhaust, like as in with the new exhaust, me driving around in my neighborhood, just so you can kind of get a little preview of what that sounds like. And uh, thanks for watching. So I know that I'm not a handsome man, but I'm, I'm feeling extra scummy today. And it's just, I've been working out here and I got crap in my eye and I'm just, you know, whatever. Uh, I want to set up a couple of things as a preface because I have not started this yet. And I don't want you to get weirded out when you're watching this. Uh, the first thing is that across the street, I believe there's some kids having a birthday party and I'm not going to try and wreck up their birthday with revving an engine and possibly blowing some smoke. And the smoke is the other part of this. The engine's not smoking anymore. I fixed that earlier. You saw that in an earlier installation of this. But I did just put in a brand new exhaust system that's been sitting in boxes with that oil that, you know, car parts have in them to keep them from rust. And so that oil, any paint, the sealant, whatever, that may all burn off, in which case there's probably going to be some smoke coming out of the exhaust. 
Uh, I don't know how much, hopefully not much, but I don't want to, you know, have that drift over and ruin their, their birthday party, you know, and give people headaches or anything like that either. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start it up together, and then we're going to go leave the neighborhood so that if we are making smoke, uh, it's kind of out in more a public area where, you know, it's not necessarily just by people's houses. <laughs> with the sound I really hope that you're able to hear clearly uh, but I have no way of knowing uh, so this is the sound at uh, 30 miles an hour third gear mm -hmm. 